Hello, my name is Haytham Abdelhadi. Um, I'm your instructor for this accounting course. And uh, we will start chapter one. And before we start chapter one, I would like to talk, uh, talk to you about what does accounting mean? What is the main purpose of accounting? So the main purpose of uh, in accounting is to keep records of your accounting transactions. Um, and then when you keep records of accounting transactions, usually you're gonna you're going to use some accounts. So each and every company will have a list of accounts, 10, 15, 20 accounts. It depends on the company. And then they're going to use those accounts for uh, reflecting and recording transactions. Um, usually in each and every transaction, you're going to use at least two of those accounts. The first thing we will talk about is the accounting equation in accounting, which is the heart of the accounting. Each and every transaction, every company has to reflect either directly or indirectly. It has to reflect on that equation. And then we will see how we're going to use these accounts for recording the transactions and reflecting them on the equation. So the accounting equation, it's basically, and I will explain that now after I have it written, it's assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity. Okay, now let me explain what each one of those means um, before we start recording transactions and uh, reflecting them on this equation. Um, asset, assets means any company belonging that has a value. So um, if, if a company has cash in the bank, that's an asset. If they have a building, if they have a piece of land, if they have a piece of equipment, if they own anything they own, it must have its own account and it's, um, it's going to be considered an asset, and it must have a value. So we cannot say, just say that, okay, there's, a, there's an open uh, tissue box um, that the company owns. So if you try to sell that, you're not, probably not going to get cash back for that. But if you have a piece of equipment or a land or, or a building, you, obviously you can still sell it and get some cash back for that. So this, is, this will be considered an asset. So it has to be owned by the company and it must have some value. That's an asset. The other side of the equation, liabilities and stockholders' equity. Liabilities, it's the creditors or the lenders claim against the asset. So in, in other words, in liabilities, it's what we owe to the lenders or to the, to the creditors, okay? Uh, the stockholders' equity, it's the owner's claims and against the assets. Okay, so if you if you add what the stockholders can claim against the asset plus what the lenders can claim against the assets, that will be the, the assets. If a company does not have any liability at all, the assets will equal the stockholders' equity. So for example, if I have my own car and I, I paid it in full, I do not owe anything to the bank, that means the total assets will equal the what I can claim against that asset. If the car is worth $10,000, when I sell it for $10,000, I will be able to get the entire $10,000 back for me as a stockholder. Um, that's, that's the same concept. But if I owe um, 4000 out of the 10000 if I sold it for ten, dollars that's, that's the asset. I have to pay back $4,000 to, uh, to the bank, and then I get back as a stockholder $6,000. So the 6 plus 4 equals the $10,000, which is the car, which is the asset, okay? Um, now, going back to companies, let's look what each one of those, what accounts, or actually, we're gonna take some examples on some accounts that fall under each one of these classifications, we call them. So assets, obviously cash, it's one, one of the, um, it's the main, account that falls under the assets. It can be cash in the bank or cash, uh, portable cash. Uh, the other very common account that almost every company has is equipment. 
The other account is, um, let's say, supplies. And then when I say supplies here, I'm talking about the supplies that we purchased, but we did not use them yet. We still have them sealed. That means they still have some value in them. Remember, once you use them, they're not going to have value in them anymore, so they we're not going to consider them as, a, as assets anymore. They have to be transferred to a different place. So before you start using them, once they still have some value, some holding value in them, we will consider them assets. Uh, if it is a merchandise company, they will probably, they will have inventory. So that's how they make business. They buy inventory, it becomes one of their belongings, and then they sell them eventually for making money from. Uh, we can say building, um, land, Maybe not every company has buildings and lands. Uh, we can also, we consider prepaid accounts. For example, prepaid rent or prepaid uh, insurance. I would just say, for example, prepaid rent. And that is considered an asset because when you prepay money to the, to, to the uh, let's say, the, um, to the landlord for the property that you're renting, if you did not consume that amount yet, it means you did not actually start renting the property, or maybe you paid it at the beginning of the period, so the period is not over yet. You did not start um, using that place with that amount that you paid initially. So it's like depositing cash in the bank. It's, it's not in the bank, but it's with the landlord. But then you will start consuming that amount over time. So at least from the accounting perspective, it's still considered part of our assets because it's cash that still belongs to us. And we did not consume it yet. Now later on, once you consume it, then it's not going to continue being an asset anymore. We have to take it away from asset. Um, the other account is accounts receivable. Accounts receivable, it's the money owed by someone to us. When I say us, I mean the company. It's us. Uh, if we provide a service, for example, if we provide a service to a customer, and then we, we finish providing the service, we're done with the service, that means it's officially becoming um, a revenue, and that's an, another account that we'll talk about soon. So. Because that, um, that service was provided and it's done, the amount owed by the customer to us becomes officially one of our assets. The way how I explain it to people, at least my way, just to make it more clear, it's like cash in someone's pocket that belongs to us already. Okay? So this is considered accounts receivable. So accounts receivable, it's the cash that will be received. It will be. You can squeeze, at least in your head, you can squeeze the words will be. It's cash that is not yet, not, it, not yet with us. It will be coming in, in future from the customers. So we are already considering that amount part of our assets. So once you add all these accounts, so each one of them we call it an account, once you add all of them, then the Once you add them up, you get the total assets. Okay, so those are examples on assets. Let's talk about the liabilities. Again, liabilities, it's any amount that we owe to someone. The most important account under the liabilities, it's called accounts payable. And it's called accounts payable because it means that there's a specific amount that we will pay to someone in future, okay? We will pay it, so that's why we call it payable. Uh, there's another example for notes, payable, which is very similar to accounts payable, but it's more 
official, it's documented usually. Uh, sometimes we charge the, uh, so we get charged interest on top of that amount that we owe. But in accounts payable, it's not that official. We don't pay interest normally. We don't sign documentation, too much documentation for that, like the notes. Uh, there's also loan payable. It can be salaries payable. There is something that we call accrued liabilities. And what that means is if we have any, uh, for example, utilities, any utility bill that becomes due, it has been accrued. Accrued means it's due for payment. It's officially money we owe for uh, the service provider of that bill. That means it's going to be one of the liabilities because we owe that amount now. Um, we can also say utilities payable, for example, utilities payable. And there's one more account that is called unearned revenue. That account is called unearned revenue because when we when, when someone pays us money in advance, let's say a customer that we are going to provide him a service in future, and he pays, pays us money in advance, when we, once we get that money, we become liable to provide a service to that customer sometime in future. So that amount becomes a liability until we provide a service to that customer. So in the meantime, between the day we receive the cash until we uh, provide the service to the customer, that amount would be considered a liability under unearned revenue. Stockholders' equity, we've got common stock. So when a company issues stock, that means they will raise cash, they will raise fund from stocks, they will give stocks to, to the stockholders and they will get cash from them. So the stockholders will become uh, one of the owners, uh, they will become part of the ownership in the company, and the the amount of cash we get from those stockholders goes to common stock. Uh, there's also retained earnings account, which I will explain in my following videos because it has too many, uh, too many things involved in it. Um, there's also, we will talk about revenue and expenses. Revenue, it's the cash coming in from, um, it's, it's, it's the value of the service or the inventory we sell to customers or the value of the service we provide to customers. That amount becomes revenue because that's what we will expect from them to be paid to us, and it, do, it does reflect on the stockholders' equity, but indirectly, okay, indirectly, it's not one of their accounts, it's not one of the stockholders' equity accounts, but it reflects on stockholders' equity. So I'm just gonna put it down here. Revenue, it reflects positively. So more revenue will reflect on more stockholders' equity. And then also expenses, And dividends, expenses, it's anything we pay for uh, operating the business. So for example, wages expense, utilities expense, uh, advertising, tax expense, um, all those are expenses. That means we, we pay that amount for running the business, it's for operating the business. It's not like paying cash for buying equipment because there's a holding value there. But when you pay cash for utilities or, or wages or rent or insurance, this is money gone and the value is gone. So it's not gonna be considered an asset, we consider that an expense, okay? Dividends, it's the portion of the net income, net income is the profit that the company makes. The portion of that profit or the pro portion of the net income that gets paid to the stockholders, that part is considered a dividend.
that amount is dividends. Okay, uh, revenues will reflect positively on the stockholders equity and ex expenses and dividends will reflect negatively on stockholder equity. Okay, uh, so and then I forgot to mention here that once you add up all those liabilities, you get total liabilities. And then here, whenever you add stock, common stock and add the retained earnings, retained earnings, it's actually going to combine revenues and expenses and dividends all in one account. And that's what we will explain in the following video. So once you have all those added up, you will get total stockholders equity. That was the first video for uh, for chapter one. Uh, that's that that's just the part one. We will talk about part two in the next video.